And welcome, everybody. Today is Wednesday, February the 3rd, and we are getting started just a couple minutes late today just to allow everybody to settle in for our first meeting here in a couple weeks. Welcome to the Aperio Teaching and Learning Meeting. And my name is Matt Burgess. I am from the University of Virginia. I will be facilitating the call today along with a whole bevy of people who will be giving their recaps from Sakai Camp. So thanks to all of you who are at Sakai Camp who will be on the call today sharing all of your experiences and your thoughts and your vision from that camp with us. Those of us who could not be there really, really appreciate it. So thanks to you guys. Uh, before we dive into that, I wondered if there were any project reps on the call who wanted to give any updates. There were folks from LEAP or folks from other projects who might want to give an update. So we'll take a couple minutes before we dive into Sakai Camp. And project reps, please chime in and let us know what's going on. Well, I'll, I'll kick it off uh, just for Sakai 11 overall. Um, it kind of relates to Sakai Camp. So we're either at, you know, code freeze. There's still some developers wanting to sneak a few things in, but I think we're pretty close to <laughs> it's a cute code freeze, um, and uh, and that's really good. And we'll probably branch. I think we're going to have. I think I've got. We've got developers who we have something called branch managers. It's really important, and I think we've got the volunteers for that. And uh, the de development team was trying to figure out what the best way of managing the code base was in Git. There's, you know. Uh, various different ways that you can manage branches versus the master version. I think they just about got it figured out. So I'm pretty hopeful about that. And, um, you know, Trisha was at both the QA meeting we just had and she was at uh, Sakai Camp. So we can probably tag team to, you know, talk about some of those things. But, uh, uh, and I think our target, which I haven't run by the broader community yet, um, I didn't get a chance to run it by the QA team or the development team, but kind of what came out of Sakai Camp is a lot of institutions really interested in getting Sakai 11 going by um, before summer. So, you know, my thinking, uh, that's around May, but it's not a firm thing. Uh, but I do think that we're, we're targeting that. And I think we're going to have a really big QA effort. And uh, I'm feeling excited about the level of participation that um, is coming out of all this. And uh, there's also like a marketing group that, that's also doing some work, but I don't really have an exact report yet on that. So, um, and that kind of ties into the Sakai Camp stuff too. And Laura joined, so that's great because Laura, Laura was also at Sakai Camp. So the three of us can kind of just, you know, tag team on sharing our oh, experiences and stuff Mariana when we get to that. Joined too. What's that? Mariana also joined us, so he was also there. So great. Is he on the, I don't see him on the call. Is he on the, this he just call? He joined. Cool. He just joined. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah, I think my uh, my Firefox is frozen, so fortunately I'm still having audio, but I don't think uh, I think it's frozen. <laughs> so so I can't see that Mariano joined. Yeah. So there's several of us, and we can, you know, it'll be it'll be a fun discussion. Yeah. Yeah. Hi everyone. Hi Mariano. So well, I think that's, that's awesome. the main thing. Yeah. yeah. That's awesome, Neil. Thanks for that update. And I know that there's been a big push to get more people involved with QA testing, and I'm sure that you and Tricia and Mariano and some other folks will want to talk more about that. If people do want to get involved in QA testing, who should they contact? Should they contact you? Um, you know, I think that, that, yeah, you're absolutely right. I think part of the discussion we want in the Sakai Camp Recap is to talk about um, QA, and uh, um, they could contact me for now. I think that that Jeff Pash and, and Dee Dee, uh, Jeff Pash from NYU and Didi Hurricane Kane from um, from Marist are are kind of helping facilitate those discussions and that planning. And so we pl and so we plan to have um, and we'll have announcements to the whole community. So what I recommend uh, is that everybody subscribe to Sakai the Sakai QA list server, and I can put instructions in the Etherpad. And that way, um, you're welcome to join us. If you want to plan, you can you know write to me or let me know now. Um, don't put it in the chat because my chat evidently is frozen on Firefox, <laughs> so I won't see it. But uh, you could put it in the chat in Etherpad or something, and, and I can get in contact with you. But otherwise, just just join up for um, Sakai QA uh, mailing list, and we'll announce how people can participate. Oops, sorry. I, uh, I'm going to put instructions here. Let me get wait till you're done there. Yep. To subscribe. Uh, 
And if you have trouble subscribing for some reason, as far as I know, the subscription has been working pretty well for folks in general. But if you do have uh, trouble, let me know and I'll help you out. Um, so the way you subscribe is you send an email to sakai-qa at, I'm sorry, plus subscribe at aperio.org. And then uh, from that point on, then any emails you'll get will become from sakai-qa at aperio.org. And that's where you can send questions. Um, but yeah, you're welcome to contact me off list if you want as well. Awesome. Thanks, Neil. Uh, before we dive into Sakai Camp stuff, any other project reps that want to give any kind of report? Louisa, I see that you're with us. Is there anything that you want to report about Leap or anything else from anybody else before we dive into Sakai Camp? Hmm. Oh, I see that Louisa's got an audio problem, which is entirely okay. So, Louisa, if you want to type anything that you want us to note in the chat, we can definitely put that in the audio recording. Well, I do want to put a plug in while Luis is uh, doing that or thinking about doing that. Put a plug in for Open Aperio. Um, proposals are due February 8th. And um, so if you can all, at all get in um, your proposals by then, uh, please do. So um, that, that would be really helpful. I know I've got several. Hmm? Next is that next uh, Monday? Yeah, yeah, it's Monday. I'm like, yeah, I'm like way behind. <laughs> so yeah, I've got a lot of work to do. Um, the proposals don't have to be lengthy, um, you know, but just enough to get convey what you're wanting to present and share with the community. And there's a number of tracks, and I think that the instructions I think are pretty good. Uh, I'm biased because I'm on the committee, but um, if you find them confusing you know let us know and we'll be happy to answer questions but yeah please try and and get uh, get those in by February 8th great thanks Neil and the only thing that Louisa noted here in the chat was she wanted to make sure if Chuck Hedrick has anything to add to the lessons tool for Sakai 11 she read the announcements about the code freeze but she didn't know if Chuck had anything that he wanted to add to trunk yeah, I think that um, it's probably a good idea to, to reach out to Chuck uh, directly because the way he manages the lessons branch is a little differently than um, the way the parts of Sakai are managed. So I think probably getting that information directly from him is an excellent idea. So thank you for uh, mentioning that. And I'll, you know, uh, be happy to, uh, you know, to write him. And, and I think he's I think he's pretty caught up. But yeah. On, on what's going in lessons, um, and I'm not sure, Louise. I know that that the UX group. I remember you guys gave him some feedback on suggestions for change, and I don't, if I remember right, he didn't necessarily agree with all those uh, recommendations. Um, and uh, so I'm not sure how how we uh, resolve those things. And Louisa also notes in the chat that Atlas is now accepting applications, and she's posted the URL for the application in the chat. So feel free to click that link and take a look at the application. Uh, based on merit, they are hoping to select up to six winners who will be announced in early April, and then they will be recognized at the next Open Imperial Conference, which is May the 22nd through the 25th in New York and hosted by NYU. And remember that for the award winners, their conference registration and their travel expenses are covered. So for all of you who work directly with faculty, if you have faculty that you think would be interested in this sort of thing that would really demonstrate some of the outstanding aspects of Sakai, please feel free to share this link with them so that they can apply for the next set of Atlas Awards. Okay. Well, I think it's probably time for us to go ahead and dive right into our Sakai Camp discussion. I've heard little snippets from different people of things that went on at Sakai Camp, which of course have only made me more and more excited to hear about even more things that happened uh, while everybody was down there. So, uh, Neil, I don't know if you want to kick us off and just uh, give a couple of highlights or summaries of things that really resonated with you, and then maybe we can also hear from Tricia and Laura and Mariano about their own thoughts. Maybe we can just kind of have a roundtable discussion here where you guys can share your thoughts with us. 
Yeah, I like that. So I'm going to limit myself um, to 30 seconds and just just kick it off. And I, because if I don't, I could go for 30 minutes. So um, I'll do the 30 second thing, and then we can <laughs> have other people have okay. everyone can kind of go around and and see what um, the group wants to talk about. So first of all, uh, I got to taste uh, butter beer at Harry Potter World at Universal. So that's very important. Um, <laughs> it tastes. Tasted like liquid butterscotch. Uh, it was very interesting, and apparently Dr. Chuck Severance is addicted to it. So um, that was kind of fun. Um, uh, um, you know, so a fun team building exercise there, just you know, hanging out at Universal. Um, and uh, let's see, in terms of the the conference, a uh, couple of high points. We we talked about a lot of stuff, and it almost felt like we didn't have enough time which was really amazing. There was so much we had packed in there. And for me, the highlights were, you know, a lot of energy around QA. We now have a really um, dynamic, we have, we now have a QA planning group. We really didn't have a substantial planning group uh, before this. So that's a real exciting outcome. Um, and it's going to take a lot of work. It is going to take com a community both to build the test plan as well as getting people to test um, you know, test QA, uh, do QA testing. So that was a big thing. I'm looking at my time. I think I'm almost up at 30 seconds. And there were some other, you know, cool things. I'll just mention, uh, we talked about the NGDLE, which is the Next Generation Digital Learning Environment, which was inspired by things like, I think Malcolm Brown did a presentation at Sakai Virtual Conference. And I think there may be a paper on that that we can get a link to. We talked about, of course, Sakai 11. We talked about QA testing. We talked about marketing um, Sakai, and we also got a lot of energy around that. So those were some of the uh, highlights uh, for me. And I think I went like a minute more than 30 seconds, so sorry about that. <laughs> Good job, Neil. Thanks. Uh, this is Tricia, and I'll, if you don't mind, I'll go next and just, um, uh, I want to say that this is the first Sakai camp that I have attended, and I was, I am really glad that I went. It turned out be a really productive time spent um, talking and planning for the marketing and the Sakai QA for Sakai 11 um, that I think are two of the most important activities that are going on right now. Um, so, uh, you know, I would encourage everyone to come and participate in these meetings. They're really more um, they're, they're much smaller groups than at the Open Imperio Conference, and it's really more of a working um, meeting rather than just hearing presentations, which is, you know, uh, as a community, we really need these opportunities to just dive in and get work done um, and plan for getting work done. So, so that really happened in a big way, and um, I just want to commend everybody who was there for just being uh, so participatory and um, giving of their time and energy to this effort. And happy to answer specific questions from anybody about it. Yeah, me too, once we get a chance for Mariano and, and Laura to, to go as well. Awesome. Thanks, guys. Laura, I see that you are also here. Did you want to chime in and add anything else before we take some questions? And your mic is not on right now, Laura. Thanks, Tricia. <laughs> uh, the University of Notre Dame has been part of the Sakai community since uh, 2011. But I have to say, uh, it's this participation at Sakai Camp that uh, has really clarified for me what the Sakai community is and how we work together. Uh, because it was a working uh, working group and we had decisions to make and, and we had voices to listen to and determine how as a community are we going to go forward. I think that was especially noteworthy to me in the discussions around marketing because we realized that uh, we have highly engaged people all over the world who are doing things, but that we don't really um, take a lot of effort to tell the world um, what it is the Sakai community is accomplishing and how big we are and how many institutions we have. And Sakai 11 will really, um, will really be an opportunity to, to um, 
you know, tell, tell everyone else what it is that we're doing and that we're not just some niche group off somewhere in Ooga Booga land. So that's what I got out of Sakai Camp. Yeah, no, we're not I think that's Ooga a great land. point. <laughs> <laughs> that's exactly right. Thanks, Laura. I think that is really important, and I am really excited to hear more about the marketing stuff that we are planning going forward. I know that you guys talked about that at the camp. I know that uh, Saul Wakan and Neil and I have talked about that a little bit and talked about that with some of our vendor partners as well. So I think it's great that we are starting to think about that a little more and I'm looking forward to where we go with that. Mariano, I know you were also at Sakai Camp. Is there anything that you wanna chime in and add? Yeah, so, um, well, pretty much, uh, I 100% I agree with uh, everything that it was it has been said right now. Um, yeah, one of the things that I took out from Sakai Camp is that uh, we were kind of worried about the uh, QA. Um, you know, we went to Sakai Camp kind of worried about a couple of things, like what the future of Sakai was going to be for 12 and also about like uh, QA for, for Sakai 11, if it was going to be released on time and, and so on. And I have to say that we came with a really clear idea that there are like uh, at least the universities that we saw over there, like uh, the ones that were there, and I'm sure that there are a lot more around the around the world. But the ones that we saw over there, are like five or six universities that had a, re a real commitment to actually make things happen for, for Sakai 11 and to get things in shape for May, June, somewhere around that time. Mm -hmm. uh, so that was like a, you know, a, a great, it was great news for, for us. And um, we're, we're one of those universities that want to push hard for, for that timeline. But it was, um, yeah, it wasn't as clear as uh, uh, until, uh, until we got there that, that we saw other people that were, you know, were having the same, <laughs> The same plans are, and the same commitments, and then in, in in talking about the future, which I think was also important, we had a lot of discussion about what other LMS uh, LMSs are doing right now around you know uh, in the marketplace and everything. And the way I see Sakai uh, Twelve, it's uh, I see a uh, you know an, an energetic community of, uh, of universities and a couple of uh, Sakai commercial affiliates that kind of start working together on small small big projects using um, what the community is working on like this uh, farm new model of doing like collaborative uh, things so it's not a you know one um, big uh, group of people making decisions for you know for everybody to follow uh, no it's not it's not the way it is it's a community of you know of universities and hard-working people that are going to put things on the table and you know um, People are going to join to those conversations and put money or like uh, um, resources and, and make things happen. So that's you know the, the highlight that I that I got, and then some more future stuff that I think that are moving forward and a couple of other interesting things, and we'll be happy to to answer things too. So it was great. That's great. I'm glad I'm hearing universally that. It was great, <laughs> although it makes me sad that I wasn't there. <laughs> yeah. This is Laura again. Uh, one of the concrete things that came out of the marketing discussion was, um, well, I guess there were two of them for me. One of them was uh, the need to create um, a better sakaiproject.org website. There are certain components that are, are missing there. If you were looking for the Sakai community, for example, if you were doing an evaluation of learning management systems, right, as your, if your institution were doing that, what kinds of um, information would they want to have? And looking at the sakaiproject.org site as sort of the, uh, the hub of all things Sakai, we, we were able to identify some shortcomings that, that we think we can uh, take care of in the next coming and and really for Sakai 11 too so that was something uh, a concrete action item I recall yep yep it's, a, it's like a lot of things are happening in the community but if you go to the website they they're not being reflected right now over there 
but you have all these calls or these like you know community things going around projects between um, great universities working together and you go to a website and you don't actually get that feeling yeah another takeaway was uh well Mar mariano just the fact that you and i got to talk about grade book two and how we would um continue using that until we can uh develop uh, the functionality that closes the gaps between what we experience using as institutions who use Gradebook 2 and the new Gradebook, uh, that conversation was priceless. And meeting up and talking with you and um, Jolie, who I don't think Jolie's on the call right now, but uh, she's, she's at Duke and discovering that uh, the three of us as institutions really need to uh, deploy Sakai 11 this summer. That, that was good to know. We're not alone in that goal. Yep. Yeah, I think that those are all good points. I agree with everything I'm hearing too. And uh, uh, my understanding of kind of where we need to go with, with the marketing. I think the, the Sakai Project at Org website, uh, making that the place we assume people will go to because it is discoverable and it's a logical place. And then if we can, Kind of the plan is to to um, reorganize it, make our community more visible on it, and hopefully find some some easy ways to do that, and also to be able to organize it in a way where if you're a user or developer, you can easily you know find what you need by having like the static links, we, uh, static relatively static links on the SakaiProject.org site pointing to the dynamic areas that the community can update. So while we dynamically update things like, like you know read notes and developer, you know, programmer's guides to getting started with Sakai and help documentation and all these things that are very dynamic, um, we can kind of point to those from the SakaiProject.org place so that, that folks don't have to go slogging through Confluence or doing tons of Google searches or asking questions on lists if they even know the list exists. So I, okay. I totally agree that's, that's a really important uh, goal for marketing. And the other goal for marketing that, that I think has come out of it that's uh, exciting to me is this idea of doing a viral marketing, meaning if the marketing team can produce videos and brochures and different kinds of things about the community, then perhaps those of you who are going to conferences could then use some of those materials to help let the broader community outside of Sakai, the educational community, the educational technology community, let them know that's how vibrant and alive Sakai is, right, by incorporating it in, in your presentations, um, whether it's at Educause, which I think Jeff Pash is, is going to, or other kinds of you know, educational or technology conferences. That's great. And another thing that came out of the marketing conversation that I thought was very compelling, uh, I may have even suggested it, uh, was that um, with, this, with this redesign of the Sakai website um, and including kind of highlights of different institutions using Sakai, including some contact information and, and creating something akin to it, a speakers bureau or people who are willing to go to nearby institutions to talk about Sakai, um, when especially when those institutions are considering um, or exploring new LMSs and want to talk to somebody about Sakai. Um, we could, you know, and, and so for very little um, time, it would be easy to go to, you know, a town nearby that has a, a college or university that is looking at LMSs and go talk to them about Sakai. And since the community doesn't really have um, a single person who is able to do that, and whereas vendors, of course, have whole teams of people who do that. Um, it could go a long way to really spreading the word and helping people understand the advantages of um, Sakai and how awesome it is. Absolutely, um, this is Kyle Blythe here. Um, so um, I think that there's just a lot of opportunity with the website right now. And I think that, you know, especially going into Sakai 11 and Morpheus, uh, having the ability to just be able to surface all this awesome functionality that we have in place now uh, the responsive design, having this contact information, having testimonials, things that would make 
this um, similar to you know the landing page that you see for a lot of other uh, systems that are out there. Hello, Kyle, are you still there? Yes, sorry. <laughs> okay. That's all I had. <laughs> uh, okay, okay, cool. I wasn't sure if you were finished. This is Laura again. There's some conversation in the chat. Uh, hi, Terry. And, um, and Jennifer as well, talking about hosting services and commercial affiliates. We had a Sakai Camp conversation, particularly listening to our commercial affiliates and trying to understand um, how their business models are affected by marketing, right? And what they can go out and sell on behalf of the community because the community benefits from... <laughs> <laughs> I'm in a classroom. <laughs> hey, that wasn't me. I am in a classroom building and uh, someone just walked down the hall. Um, I don't know. I didn't know they taught opera in this building. Uh, where was I? Oh, health and robustness of, of commercial affiliates and how um, marketing the Sakai product and community helps them maintain that, you know, marketability themselves. So um, that that was an interesting conversation as well, because we'd like to see one or two more commercial affiliates, not less. Um, the, uh, uh, yeah, I'm not gonna, I, I was gonna mention the NGDLE, but I think we were talking still about marketing, so I don't wanna like destroy, you know, uh, disrupt the flow of that. So if there's other mark, I mean, there's certainly other marketing things I can think of, um, but, uh, uh, does anyone else have any marketing kind of stuff? Yeah, and, and I don't know, uh, Neil, if you want to extend an invitation to others on the call to join the marketing um, working group. Yeah, I mean, that, sure. Um, yeah, that's a that's a good point. So what I'm what we're going to be doing is um, we've got uh, if you're interested in, in joining the marketing group and, and think that you can help produce videos or you know help us um, reach out into the community and talk to people to get those some of those use cases or testimonials. Um, you know, any kinds of things you think if you can contribute to that, uh, that's what we're looking for 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 the marketing group. And so let me know if you want to join that. And with QA, I think we've got a pretty solid QA group, though it's possible we could use additional people because what we're trying to do with the QA group um, is update the test plan. And that's a lot of work. So yeah. um, I, I wouldn't be surprised if we could use, like if you wanted to take like a tool, for example. Um, I forget which tools have already been taken, but people are signing up, like institutions like Duke or Notre Dame are saying, hey, we'll take this tool and we're going to go through the existing regression scripts and, and we're going to figure out what's needed and we're going to you know update them or we're going to add some new scripts uh, that sort of thing would be hugely hugely helpful and I don't know Mariano if you had something to add to that no yeah I was I was just going to say that we should go through uh, over the marketing over the QA um, um, yeah discussions that we had at Sakai camp like uh, all the results that we, that came out from from Sakai Camp, which I think was you know a great part of of uh, Sakai Camp was that we had some time to focus on on QA planning and, and all of that. But that could go after you finish. No, yeah, no, you can go ahead. Yeah. So um, um, yeah, as Neil is saying, we are you know um, QA. It seems like has really already take, taken off for for Sakai 11, and we had a planning meeting like right before this meeting. Um, we're working on on like organizing all the all the um, spreadsheets on how we're gonna like manage QA. Um, I think we can announce that the intention is to have. Um, on Thursdays, at, I think it's 10 a.m. Eastern, right? 10 a.m. Right. To, right. to noon? Right. Yeah. right. Uh, to noon. And I, I'm not sure if it's uh, every week or every other week. It's going to start in, in, uh, in, I think, uh, in a couple of weeks. In and a couple of weeks, yeah. yeah. It's going to start, yeah. 
but then will it, will it be every week or every other week or will um, it right i think that proposal oh, go ahead sorry trisha we i think we decided every week starting on the 18th of february cool yeah yeah, I think there's still so, some details, you know, that we're working out. And I think, um, you know, like I think not everyone will necessarily get all their testing done in that time period. Um, so how can we support, you know, how can we support you as QA testers to, you know, really contribute and make it easy for you? And how can we orient people who haven't done QA testing before? That sort of thing. We're also talking about those things. Right. Yeah. We know that people will need some, you know, guidance on on what to do and where to do it so um we want to be resources to everyone for that so yes yeah, so if you're interested in the marketing group and helping helping to you know we have i think some really great a uh, start on ideas for marketing i i you know we need to sort of pull them together um because we've had several different groups that overlap somewhat but not completely have these really great ideas and so um, if you're interested in helping with that, like I said, either creating materials that would help, um, you know, with our website improvement um, or reaching out, I suspect we're going to want to reach out to other uh, institutions in the community and, and get their stories and get their information to help to help promote things would be really cool. Um, so either of those you want to or you can wait for when we send out the message on QA, <clears throat> you know, testing and uh, and. Uh, you know, join up then. And as Mariano mentioned, we also, you know, are making progress on farm, which we've presented. Um, so I don't know, if, just, just I'll give you a, just a few seconds for, just in case, I'm not sure if everyone knows of farm, but the idea of farm is uh, funding and resource model, resource management. And the idea there is we've had these projects like Gradebook NG and the LEAP project and STEP project and Raleigh for accessibility, where it's been a leader who's gotten together and said, this is really important to us, found other institutions in the community and commercial affiliates that it was also important to, came together, uh, figured out how to fund it, uh, how to get the resources, and then launch projects. So we want to make that ability, um, you know, broadly available as, you know, so for all community members. So we talked a little bit about FARM and how it also fits into making our community more visible also on the website and also for, um, you know, for marketing purposes. So that was another thing that, that came up. And the other thing I wanted to mention before I forget, and then <clears throat> is the NGDLE discussion I thought was really interesting. So the we had a little bit of discussion around the next generation digital learning environment and where is Sakai's place in that? And um, at least one person in the room, maybe it was more than one, felt like in some ways Sakai is really well positioned um, to be a next generation digital learning environment because of its flexibility of, uh, you know, how you can configure it, how you can skin it, how you can integrate it, and how you can plug in LTI tools. So there was some discussion about kind of how that, um, you know, that might evolve over time, you know, that ability to, that flexibility. And what, what it would take technically so that it was easier for developers to build plugins that could, you know, um, uh, kind of act as modules that can plug into Sakai using standards so that it would be those plugins could also work on Blackboard and Desire to Learn and, and Canvas, that sort of thing. But I thought that was that was kind of an interesting discussion too for to me. Oh yeah, absolutely. Such an yeah. I and then I had the this is Laura. And then I had the dissenting view, or perhaps you could say it's the opposite view, so that we could represent a, a, an end-to-end -end kind of thing, that um, that we should differentiate between the Sakai community as a resource and the Sakai code base as a resource. And there's nothing to say that we couldn't leave our code base behind and start over again. For example, the, uh, the open edX platform is built on Python, which is a more recent um, technology code and the open edX code base uh, could provide a starting point for our community that already knows you know we've we've been through a lot together on the particular code base that we do right now so this was kind of the conversation that went back and forth between well we could start over or we could evolve or we could um, you know do what something in the middle I think for this teaching and learning group, it's important to realize that 
you know, developers will be experts at what tools are out there and what the best methods of doing things are. But as far as a vision for what the post LMS world is going to, the teaching and learning group is going to be where that comes from, what kinds of pedagogies it needs to support, what kinds of um, ways people work and put things together. So that, that um, you know, that's food for thought for the teaching and learning group. So I'm curious if there are any questions. I mean, hearing all this, I imagine um, that it may or may make some sense. It may not all make sense. So, <laughs> so people on the call who have just been kind of listening to us uh, banter a bit, curious if there's any, and I can't see the chat. So if chat questions are coming in, I, I can't tell other people will have to, to voice them. Or if people want to hear more about Harry Potter, Potter World, I'm happy to share that as well. <laughs> well, there are some questions going on in the chat. In fact, Terry um, is going to check with LAMP to see if they would be um, willing to adopt a tool for testing. And she is wondering, what if, is there a particular tool they could um, that would that would be good for them to adopt. Um, Terry, I don't know if you have taken a look at that list or not, but um, I would say make it a tool that the LAMP community um, uses a lot and cares about, because that will be, that will make more, um, make them more interested in getting that testing done. Yeah, well, that's this is Terry. That's a lot of times that's what everybody's interested in, like the lessons tool or tests and quizzes or, you know, something really common like that. I figured those were already taken. Right. That's that's true. Um, so, yeah, it's, it's tough because, I mean, everything needs testing. You might want to pick something that already has some regression scripts and um, like the syllabus tool is not taken yet. Um, but again, I don't know if that is something that the LAMP community ever even uses. Yeah, Samuel will need a lot of help. So yeah. uh, we, we want to check here, but I, I, I will Definitely say that having two or three owners might be a good idea. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I think we'll need a lot of help for sure. Um, also, um, I'm confident. I'm pretty confident that we got an, uh, Wilma and I got an offline inquiry from from someone at um, at uh, uh, in Lamp, um, but I don't remember who. It might have been Dave Johnson because he. I'm sorry, Dave Eveland because he was there. Yeah, yeah he was he at the was conference. There. Yeah, yeah. Um, and that that could well be, but I've kind of found if we throw something out in general, like you need to go to Sakai and test some of these things, people kind of let it go past their heads. But if we had something specific yeah. and targeted, and if I challenge them to go in and look at the syllabus tool, um, you know, specifically, then we've got a task. It's not just a general go do this. It's it's a task. I don't know. It's so, more motivating to me. Sure. Right. So if you're requesting that we assign you something, we will do that. <laughs> <laughs> That'd be great. That's what I'm requesting. Yes. Okay. And cool. Then next week when we have our conference meeting, um, I can say we've been asked to take this on. Okay. And, super. And another thing. Uh, sorry to interrupt, but we have prioritized the tools that we care about, you know, making sure they get done first or, you know, they're the highest priority and then there's medium priority. So I would say if there are any gaps in the high priority tools, start there. And, and then once those are handled, um, then move on to the medium priority and then the low priority. Uh, so right now, I think syllabus is up in the high priority um, list. So if you guys are interested in that, um, well, I I am, but and I'm not speaking for them. I'm saying next week I'll present it to them and see if they're willing to help with this. Okay, great. Okay. Super. 
So we do yeah, have some additional have comments questions? here in the chat. Um, we do have some additional comments here in the chat. Uh, Sawa mentions that, you know, in her opinion, this issue with the code base does seem like a very important issue to address, this issue with the code base that Laura was just talking about. So there's definitely some additional interest in maybe hearing more about that conversation from you guys who were there. I'm not sure what additional to We just lost you. No. And we may have lost Neil. So Tricia, is there anything that you want to add about that? Or is that just something that no. we should all kind of I keep in mind going forward? To, yeah, there's not, I don't have anything to add about that specific thing, no. Okay. Um, it's just something to consider. Okay. Um, so I don't think there's anything more to be said about it right now. Well, I know one thing that you guys talked about that Neil mentioned briefly was farm and the possibility of, you know, raising funds and allocating funds generally. And I wonder if you guys might want to share your thoughts about that, about the conversations that you all had regarding farm and other fundraising projects and where you all think, in your opinions, that money should go. Do you all have thoughts about that? I, I missed, I was dropped off of Blue Blue Button. I'm sorry, could you repeat the question? <laughs> sure. Um, I know that you guys talked a little bit about farm. I know that that's something, Neil, that you've been involved with and that Wilma's been involved with and that we've been talking more about fund management and how to allocate the money that we raise uh, for Sakai. And I was just wondering what kind of thoughts you all might have about where we might want to allocate the funds that we raise you know, going forward as we finalize Sakai 11 here. Oh yeah, right. Well, I think Mariano and I are on the same page. I don't. I forget if we talk with Wilma and the group. I think we're having a meeting soon. But on Monday, yeah, next Monday. Next Monday, I think that we like the idea of actually figuring out if we can use the funds towards helping the Sakai 11 release, either the QA, bug fixing, or marketing. Since Sakai 11 is our number one thing in the community, um, that's an idea that several people um, are excited about. But I don't think we've made a decision yet. Hmm. Or have we? You have a different different uh, perspective? No, 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 no. I was just thinking that maybe uh, the question was going towards farm, and 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 your answer is more about the the virtual conference funds. Right. My answer was right, which which uh, somehow are related, but not strictly related. Right. Right. So, for example, right. That's right. They are related, but not strictly. So, I might might have miss, uh, I might have twisted the the uh, the uh, answer around a little there. Yeah. Which is okay, because I think that that question could be taken in a couple of different ways. So, I think that's fine, Neil. I was interested in specifics and also just in general thoughts about where you guys think funds should be allocated in general going forward. If you all had thoughts about that. Well, the idea of a farm um, is like an, it's like an unconference type of thing where if you've been to an unconference, this was sort of an unconference where people go and they decide what they want to do. So the idea of farm is kind of like that. It's that the community, the idea is that anyone in the community can um, easily uh, suggest ideas and see the interest in, in the broader community if other people are interested in those ideas and there's enough interest and provide some support to make it easier for those groups to get going, you know, to, to help them understand kind of how that would work so they can they can create the projects that, that make sense and how they can kind of test the waters, whether it's a Sakai project um, enhancement or some other Aquaria project, you know, give them some guidance in terms of who to talk to in the community and um, to kind of see the viability and feasibility of their idea and, you know, how they would go about maybe fundraising and what kind of support um, a perio could provide for them those sort of things. So it's not the idea of farm isn't that farm will somehow um, just get all this money and there'll be a, a small elite group that will decide what to do with it. The idea of farm is to help empower the community to do things on their own and to provide some support for them to do it, but not to do it for them. 
Okay. Thanks, Neil. That clarification is really helpful, at least to me. We do have some comments here in the chat. Uh, Laura was asking about the total amount of money raised in the virtual conference, that it was somewhere around $13,000, which sounds about right. Tricia verified that. And Terry also commented that she'd like to see that virtual conference funds allocation happen in a timely way, um, that it would go towards something that needs some urgent attention, uh, which I think is a very sensible idea and probably something that a lot of us would certainly agree with. Yeah, yeah we've, we've certainly had that conversation at Sakai Camp and also on the um, committee that's deciding how to use those funds. Um, so that is key and I think Sakai 11 is our, our focus and we're going to, I think we're, I think the plan is to devote it to in some way to forwarding Sakai 11's release, ensuring yeah. that that happens. Is that, is that what you recall, Neil? That's kind of what yeah. I was thinking. And it could also be a farm project in that 13K, it's a little tricky, right? Because there's so many things that potentially could go towards. It could go towards help with our marketing effort or developer time for our Sakai project.org website, or it could go towards maybe a QA firm, because uh, there are firms out there that, you know, uh, do QA or write QA scripting, or it could go towards getting bugs fixed, or there's so many different ways it could be used. So I think, and, and, and really, 13 k can get used up pretty quickly, so it potentially could be a farm project. So we're, we're starting with this 13 uh, k and we'd love to raise more money. Of course, there is that timing issue, because we're trying to get Sakai 11 out in a very great, you know, just a few months. So. So yeah, I, I agree with all that. Yep. The the planning the 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 meeting that uh, that group is meeting again on Monday next Monday. So we'll, there will probably be more news uh, next week around that. Yeah, hopefully uh, we'll actually be able to arrive at a clear decision. <laughs> And Terry comments in the chat that it does help if our, those financial contributions go towards something that makes a, a visible difference, a visible change, and that is certainly something that I think resonates the most with front-end users, if they can see stuff uh, that's changing cosmetically or changing in a way that they can see, that's absolutely uh, something that they can uh, see and understand, so that's a good point. Yeah, I think that's a good point as well, although I'm going to make a pitch that there's also importance to sometimes doing things that people can't see. A good example is the Raleigh project, which is accessibility. Unless you um, have, uh, uh, you know, site issues or other kinds of issues that prevent you from using Sakai uh, natively, you need to have that accessibility support built in. But that's the thing most users aren't going to see, but it's still really, really important. And as we as Laura was mentioning, whether we evolve Sakai or start a new uh, way of, you know, developing a new environment, you know, there's there's infrastructure things that users don't see, which are, which are critically important to making Sakai a tool that can be, um, you know, that, that scales well and can be updated easily. So I agree in principle that people like things they can see, and it makes a lot of sense to consider that. I think with any funds, um, but the other hand. You know, in the long term, I think we're going to also maybe want to consider projects that maybe are not as um, as flashy and visible. And that'll, you know, that's just my my thinking. I don't know if it reflects any anybody else. I think that certainly reflects a lot of folks. I think you know Terry and Laura both agreed with that assessment in the chat, and I know that that's something that we at UVA would agree with. We've been talking about accessibility a great deal lately, and we've obviously been following cases of American universities that have been hit with large lawsuits because their universities, including their LMSs in some cases, were not accessible. So that is definitely something uh, that we are very interested in, and I think a lot of folks are interested in going forward. Trisha has posted in the chat a spreadsheet of some proposed projects for uh, the virtual conference, and so you can click on that link to that Google Doc. And Laura's commenting that maybe that link isn't public, so we might need to change the settings there to make that public. Either that or you would have oh. had to purchase, say, one from all of Anders in 
universe. <laughs> or if you have something special from Harry Potter world that will allow you to access it, you may be able to access it anyway. <laughs> <laughs> so it looks so, like we have just a couple of minutes here. Any final thoughts that you guys want to have? I want to have them. <laughs> <laughs> I do have them. Yeah, I'm just gonna add one thing. Like, um, um, I thank uh, Laura for bringing out the conversation about the Great Book Two thing because that's a big thing for us in order to go to Sakai Eleven. So, for those of you that use uh, Great Book Two right now and are thinking about going through uh, to uh, moving to Great Book NG, we updated the um, the conference page where we have the I'll paste the link in the in the chat where we have the the. Um, um, differences between Gradebook One, Gradebook Two, and Gradebook NG. So, yeah, if you are familiar familiarized with that information and you want to, you know, check it out, and make some comments, or, or, or you are gonna have to face the problem or to face that challenge, just uh, let us know because we we're definitely trying to to make that happen to close the gap between Gradebook Two and Gradebook NG. Um, yeah, just that. That's great. Thanks, Mariano, for that final thought. Anybody else? Well, I, I certainly hope that we have opportunities to report back to this group um, as, as these efforts continue, and I'm sure we will have opportunities to do that because we'll, we'll be asking for input and also participation. Um, so uh, I hope we can keep keep this going. It's very important. Agreed, absolutely. Um, it makes me think that um, in terms of like scheduling the thing for people put in the back of their mind, I wonder, you know, in terms of scheduling these meetings, you know, I think one well, there is something about being in person that definitely seems to help accelerate the planning. Um, I don't know if there's a way to replicate that virtually, but that's a thing you might want to think about if there's, you know, ways to do that. Um, uh, anyway, just saying that. No problem. Yeah. Laura, Kyle, anything that you all want to add before we start to wrap things up here? Are we going to talk about future topics for future meetings at all? We should take a couple of minutes to do that. We do have a topic scheduled for our next meeting, uh, which will be two weeks from today, so February the 17th. Uh, Lila Marshall, who works with us here at the University of Virginia, is going to talk about our integration of Panopto, uh, the lecture capture tool. Um, and we're going to talk a little bit about how that tool works and also how we have integrated that into our local instance of Sakai. So we do have a meeting scheduled for our next meeting. But we should take a few minutes to talk a little bit about topics for our following meetings, because at this point we don't have anything scheduled after our next meeting on the 17th. And uh, I don't think you were on the call of the last meeting, Matt, but we actually did some voting uh, on topics that we were most interested in, and a report back on the Texas State Marketing Project was one of the things at the top of that list of, of the vote. So I don't know, um, I don't know who would do that, but I know that was of um, particular interest to. Well, I know Salwa is on the call. Salwa, do you have any thoughts about that? Is that something that you might be willing or able to do? Okay, and Salwa says that that is something that she is able to do. So perhaps we could schedule that for the meeting after next. Mm-hmm. I think that sounds great. Thank you, Salwa, so much for agreeing to do that. And I don't know if you want to invite Grace to to that, so she might be able to um, help you present on that. That would be really great.
Okay, and so we'll, we'll reach out to Grace and see if she can join us. And, and it's timely considering our conversations around marketing. I, I think it would be very useful to have that, to hear about that. Absolutely, absolutely. Yeah, um, can you hear me? I forget if I'm on mute or not. Yep. Uh, yes. Okay, you can hear me. So yeah, I think that, that certainly, you know, along those lines, if it was of interest, I, I do think that they'll be some things we could talk about in terms of just the marketing group. So it maybe doesn't have to be limited to the Texas State um, report, but the actual things that the, that the group maybe is, is working on is a possibility as well. So a little more in-depth, yeah. uh, you know, report on that and get ideas from y'all. And we also have a couple of uh, requests in the chat. Uh, Sawa was wondering if we could have a demonstration of columns and lessons. That's something that I would definitely be interested in seeing. So that's a request from Sawa. Uh, Jennifer asking uh, if the Pictures into Sakai group can try a new date since they were not able to on their scheduled date. I believe that they actually presented in our last meeting, Tricia. Is that correct? No, they did not. Uh, they they didn't show up, and we need to reschedule that. Oh, okay, great. So Jennifer then was requesting that we reach out to them, and I think that we can certainly do that. Right, we should do that <laughs> for sure to reschedule them. So maybe we can get them to come on March sixteenth. <coughs> Excuse me, sorry. Okay, well, we are pushing up against the end of our time today. Any other thoughts, any other comments about future meetings that we need to make? We're now booked up through March the 2nd, which is great. Anything else we want to add before we shut things down for the day? <laughs> Sawa <laughs> writes, go community. And I agree. I think that's a great way to end this meeting, actually. This has been a really great discussion uh, where we got a lot of different opinions on a lot of the really vibrant and really exciting things that are going on in different parts of our community. And I have really been inspired by that, and I hope you guys have also. Uh, we have a lot of rah-rah uh, as a result of this meeting. I think mm -hmm. Terry's right about that. Um, so thanks to everybody for coming and participating through your audio comments or through your questions or comments in the chat. Uh, thank you, Laura. It was my pleasure for hosting. And I will look forward to seeing all of you um, back here in two weeks uh, on February the 17th uh, to hear a little bit more about Panopto. So I'm going to shut off the recording. Thanks, everybody, for a really great meeting, a lot of great stuff. And I look forward to seeing you all very soon. Thanks, Matt. Thanks, bye. Thank you. Bye.